Yes, welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. We're all swaying to the uh, uh, the evil rhythms of the Dark Mark Show theme, courtesy of Kevin Crone. Thank you. Sorry we're late. That was my fault. Uh, I, I, Google Maps failed me again. But we're going to get right into it because we got a, we got a great show. We have a literary show. Wow, literally. Yes. <laughs> literary means uh, th things that you read. Is, is That's what it is. Oh, does it? Yeah. Thank we you have, for explaining yeah, that. We have here. And also we're going to talk Comic-Con and pop culture and whatever we can squeeze into voice. Because most, and most of our listeners, you know, they turn in for... You know. That's of course my co-host Josie. Josie, you want to say? Josie, you want to say hello to the dark minions out there? Now we're gonna hello, smart dark minions. Yes, and because uh, uh, I don't want you who could read. I don't want you. I don't want you <laughs> to insult our our new fans in Turkey and Algeria. I was looking at the uh, stat statistics. We're really going worldwide. Uh -oh, now. Yeah. My boyfriend found me. <laughs> I didn't know you were going out in Algeria. Right next to you, we have uh, Xavier Axelson. Yes, did I pronounce hello. that right, Xavier? Perfect. Oh, great. And he is uh, he is a, not only a columnist for examiner.com, but he has a very interesting past. There's a lot of things going on there. Uh -oh. He's a, he's a uh, he's very well known for his erotica writing. And he's his horror werewolf novel, uh, Lily, has just been reissued. Yeah. And we're glad to have him. Plus, he had the... Uh, the great taste of featuring me in a, in a uh, column at examiner.com. And right next to him, and she's, uh, yes, she's getting a little jealous because I'm, I'm just gushing over Xavier. We love her. We, our, our friend, she hasn't been on for a while. Last time you were on, I think your hair was dark. Mm -hmm. uh, the beautiful uh, comic book artist. She's, she was a journalist back in the day. I still dabbles in that. And she has a new horror uh, novella, uh, uh, which is called uh, Killing Jars. And, uh, of course... A beautiful Nicole Six. Hello. What is that tiny little book you held up? Is that for Barbies? Uh, it's for the, uh, <laughs> the Bar Sinister so release party or the uh, anniversary party. How cute. Let me yeah. see that. Do, do, do your Barbies read? Is that, is, that, uh, is that what happens? My Barbies are intelligent. <laughs> Literate Barbies. Although I can't right. read this because I'm blind. Right. We, we have this to get is some awesome. Glasses. I have to make 450 of them. This is great. She really? hand makes them all with her love and her fingers. She, should... <laughs> she showed me that. Oh. Not, yes. You could do some dirty ones. I could. <laughs> yes. Leave them in bathrooms across LA. Yeah. I don't know if that's in the plans, but uh, yeah, I think tiny erotica. See, that's see. Now you're you're getting into the literature yourself, Josie. You're getting, you're coming up with good ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do work for a publishing company. Right. And before <laughs> and, and before we get started, I did want to say five years in publishing. We don't have time for the Hollywood Report, so we'll have to hear about Molly Crew concert uh, next time. Uh, but mm -hmm. Sunday, uh, Josie. Will be introducing me as part of the Inside Joke Skid Row Studios Live. If you're in L.A., if you're in Turkey, Algeria, you might miss it. But if you're in L.A., go to the Hollywood and Highland Center, Inside Jokes, right at the Man Chinese Theater. I'm doing a show where it's all the Skid Row Thursday night comedy lineup. We have Nestor Rodriguez and Simon Kaufman from the Stories Public Radio, which is on 9. That's like a bunch of people in a New York barbershop talking shit. And then at 10, they've got Eidenberger, and they have like five comics, April O'Connor, Brian Talmo. Uh, Preston Blaine, Megan Rice, and David Berger are going to be on the show, and that's like that's like anarchy. That's a bunch of people just they they they, they shock people. They shocked me with a shock collar when I was on the show, and they have a they're they're going to need them. And they have a structure because we we, we just have a free form discussion. They actually have a structure. Who's going to get in the fist fight? Nobody's going to get in a fist fight. I don't know. Well, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully not. And and I, I did want to say the bravo for your performance at Whiskey Blue this Friday night. Thank you. you that was a the really new fun Hollywood, show. Uh, nightclub. And. I was at work. I know, I know. You're at work. And I like whiskey blue. That might be the after party for the inside jokes on Sunday. Maybe we'll come down there and have a couple drinks. It's already the club's catching on quick. Well, yeah. I was going to say because uh, I'm, I'm starting to see already a lot of post of other friends' bands that are playing, right. and um, it's cool. We need a rock club. Because because I know I know the last rock club, the <laughs> no one, hip hop, <laughs> the last rock club, the one that you got banned from, uh, uh, which we will loaded. Let, we yeah, can say it. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I, I, I was seeing, I was seeing I was seeing your band with Nicole. Mm -hmm. At Loaded, and she's like, I love Josie, I hate Loaded. So, <laughs> Whiskey Blue is a lot more spacious than Loaded. I don't want to say anything about Loaded, but... Uh, I'm still not really keen on the music, but now yeah. I have two different friends DJing on two different days, so I right. keep getting fucking dragged back to Loaded. Right. <laughs> but uh, Whiskey Blue is a I was, lot... I was there last week. Yeah, it's like this nexus. No just keeps Xavier, 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 he's, he's confused. Uh, it's, uh, are you familiar are with you the Rock New York? No, I'm from Boston. Okay. You're from Boston. East Coast, yeah. I, so. I, can I ask him a few questions? I know you have a, a <laughs> lot. Please, 
Please, Josie, go right ahead. <laughs> well, I know you have a, a, a you know a lot to ask him, but um, I, I've been researching I've, thoroughly, mostly on Nikki, but uh, uh, on the call, excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> My best friend writes for the Examiner, and I I, I did a couple pieces for them. Um, I don't know if you know Adina. No, no? And, and actually, great question, Josie. Yeah, but I <laughs> actually am not writing with the Examiner anymore. I okay. um, no. Yeah, I had an accident. I slipped in, fell in dog piss at a pet store and tore my ro Whoa. rotator what? cuff. What? Yeah, I tore my rotator cuff right through. And so People I need had to, to clean up after Ouch. their pets. Wait, wait, wait so did, this inspire, did this inspire the werewolf novel? No, or, no, or? no. It inspired me to give up my <laughs> column because I couldn't lift my arm. To oh, right. damn. So I was like, yeah, I kind of got to take a break. That so, sucks. Yeah. So it might come back. We'll see. Yeah, I didn't have enough time to do it, but they're I like them. They're yeah. cool. Yeah, they pay a penny a um, click. <laughs> yeah. Do they really? Yeah. Oh, good. So okay. I had one of the top five columns in Los Angeles. I think I made um, eighty dollars for the year. So, yeah, so, 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 I, um, yeah. so you're okay. You're so I'm doing well. I mean, nobody worry. <laughs> right. I'm. I'm. I'm good. I have hey, no at least you're getting paid something. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, we, we're all artists. We know what that's right, like. Right. <laughs> so, right. so it, it, was there any other any other uh, questions, Josie? Well, I, you're going to talk to him about the book. We were talking about it earlier. It's, okay. it's pretty interesting. Go ahead. Well, no, because I, I, I was funny because I, I, I if he was from New York, I had a whole bunch of questions. Because never mind. Right. But, it's just but, nice. like like uh, yes, <laughs> like like where's the best pizza gonna... in New York? Or, or... <laughs> no, I, I know that. <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, it, well, I'm glad you guys. I'm glad you guys uh, got to know each other because it's funny. Uh, about a year ago, it's probably almost exactly a year ago. I listened to the show again. Is when uh, uh, Nicole Six was on our show, and that was actually the first time that you two had met. Yes, Josie mm -hmm. and Nicole. You never met, although we you've met been on at, the show. You've been at the same and parties. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we see each other all the time. Now. We technically um, had been at um, it was Johnny and Lacey's Fourth of July party. It really is exactly almost the same time. Yeah, yeah. It was she, last she, saw, July. she saw you raiding the refrigerator, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was there with yeah. the uh, fireball and vodka. <laughs> oh yeah. But as you can see, a year a year later, things have changed. Uh, she's blonde now. For the time. <laughs> so Nicole, so blondes have more fun. Uh, you seem to. It seems to be. Blondes working. are distinctively more popular. Like, no one cares about anything else. They're just like, blonde. Really? <laughs> just people like adding that with boom, boobs, too. Boom. <laughs> well, we know that about boobs. And, uh, but uh, is, that is that true, Josie? Because I, I know you've been blonde and you've yeah, been brunette. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, with the boobs, it really doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Right. Well, and, and I've Nicole, asked a lot of my male beautiful friends. Boobs. Don't, start, don't start with that. Josie's Nicole, boobs are bigger. <laughs> well, so are, so are Xavier's, but uh, that's, uh, that, that's the... <laughs> Well, and that was, and let me let me that gets to my my next question because I uh, you you wrote the column for me and we I mean, yeah. we, we corresponded an email and then you were telling me all all this great stuff about you, you want to be on the show mm -hmm. and uh, so then I I went on your Amazon page first off uh, honestly I I didn't know you were gay oh okay I do now <laughs> it's pretty obvious <laughs> I was at Tori Amos with you last night really well, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't well we didn't that we makes didn't you gay too I know I know but, no, um, no 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 well, 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 here's the Tori Amos about what you said about the line being longer. Well, no, no, in the well, that men's was my bathroom. little joke that there wasn't a big line in the men's room. My friend had an extra Tori Amos ticket. I love Tori Amos. I, I'm a sensitive heterosexual, which uh, is horrible. I, apparently, that's. That, I mean, you, you you get laid all the time. I mean, all you, the time. You, you got you got. I mean, you share, we were both beautiful bears. I'm married, so yeah. I'm, oh, okay, but, but I, you, when I you were saying I have a bear in my cave, yeah. Because oh. you're, you're known for your. That's what I was getting at. Your gay erotica. Yeah, yeah, and I actually started writing it because. Um, the fucking LA Weekly. They've gotten me into so much trouble. I uh, <laughs> Back in 2010, they wrote a cover story about women writing gay erotica right. for gay men. And um, I was like, what? I, you know, if they can do it, I can do it. And I'm a writer. I, I write horror, though. And I, right. I don't write genre, you know, sexual horror. So I put it in my drawer and I forgot about it. And then it kept haunting me and haunting me. So I wrote a Christmas story of all things, a Christmas romance, which is completely outside. Like, like of Santa me. Claus was flies it, down the window. Was it gay or it was, it was gay and I, you know, I did it like in, I said it in 1940s. It was like a 1940s. Um, Wait, I saw this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the Christmas story. It's, it's, a, it's a, a whole Christmas different story. story. Um, I know. <laughs> Trust me. And I wrote it and they needed a happily ever after. I'm really, I, I don't do happily ever afters. And right. so I read it to a friend of mine. Um, I was working at a sex shop at the time and over the cock and ball torture toys, um, she was like, you know what? You need to have him come back. They need to be Are together. Are you sure in that's where it was at? 
That's exactly where it was. I remember. <laughs> I remember. Yes. I remember. Okay. Well, we're talking about talking no, about poetry. Sarcasm. I, I got a clear memory. I probably yeah. get my sarcasm, don't you? <laughs> if and I was standing by it, I'd remember. <laughs> you'd remember. Yeah. You you only need to see urethra plugs a couple times. You remember. And what? Um, <laughs> please, please, uh, please, uh, please uh, let's let, let's sidetrack here. Urethra plugs? Yeah, that's exactly. Nicole seems to know what I'm doing. I don't, but it sounds painful. I'm sure yeah. it sounds really painful. Uh, right. So explain what urethra plugs are for the dark market uh, audience. Oh, wait. A plug for your. Yeah. I figured, but <laughs> they actually look ones? like they actually the look like a keychain. Like there's actually oh. a ring at the end of them. Oh, so and then like a it can long... have it with you all the time. Yeah. And then like, <laughs> just, you said, just from when you need it in that special bathroom. You said, you said, you said it's long, Tim? Yeah. It, you know, they have different sizes because it's basically going to stretch the urethral hole. So it just start off really small and then there'll be like really fat ones like that. And, and what, is, what is the, what is the, I mean, what does that do? It usually, you know, from what I, from my understanding of it, there's men who do it. Um, there is some sort of pleasurable sensation. It is like, I guess, having your cock fucked from inside. I don't. I've never done it, but then what is she for? I don't even have one. It sounds painful. So it'd be like losing sure virginity. Oh, 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 by the way, really this is a, this person. is a urethral plug on the screen right here. Ooh, with a beat. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jenny's what back. Thanks, Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> the, the, the third one in is very. I'm very familiar. Jenny, with our producer, she's very familiar with the urethral plugs. Yep. Yeah. Are you really? Well, welcome wait, wait, wait. back, oh, Jenny. Okay. We haven't seen you for a while. Yeah. Well, she's, I know. She I'm glad been, to do your show again. <laughs> she's been moonlighting well, other shows. Well, she's been well. She's been doing Ginger's show, and wink, I'm sure this, this might have. Uh, wow. That's awful. That's, oh, yeah. what happened? Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> like, you just, you just click on that. What's what's going on there? Oh. oh! Be careful yeah, with your toys. Is. Yeah. Uh, Safe sex. Right. See the, the keychain. Wow. Let's, let's see if we can describe this for the Dark March show audience listening on iTunes and radio. You, you, you stay can with Steve. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. sure you can. You can get all I'm the sure stuff. I'm sure a sponsor well, has well, books that's, about that's it. That's eBay on UK. <laughs> I like, you know what? If uh, if you uh, manufacture urethra plugs and you want to sponsor the Dark Mark Show, <laughs> uh, go to darkmarkshow at gmail.com, which reminds me, we're, uh, audible.com is our sponsor. We have two uh, writers. I love audiobooks. Go to uh, audibletrial.com uh, forward slash darkmarkshow or darkmarkshow.com. And you get a free day, free book, free audio book, and free 30-day trial. Nicole, do you have any books on uh, Audible? I was going to say Stephen King's books on Audible are really good. Right, they do. They're have. read by professional actors, and they're fucking amazing. Right, and they and they have comedy albums. They have plays and all stuff. Also, uh, Damatees.com. They don't have urethra plug shirts, but they have uh, porn star shirts. Uh, they have <laughs> they have Buck <laughs> they Angel need, shirts. They, they have one. Tracy Lord shirts. They have great punk rock shirts. They have a shirt that's... Uh, misfits, it, 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 it's not misfits, it's misfets. It's Boba Fett with a devil awesome. lock. <laughs> Great. So go to damatees.com, tell them you heard from the Dark Mark show, you save 10%. So from urethra plugs, we're going to get yeah. uh, catch up with uh, Nicole Six. Now, Nicole, <laughs> now, I, I, Xavier, I don't know if you know Nicole. I'm sure you probably researched it to see who you were going to be on I with. I did. And oh, Nicole, was, was, she was a journalist, and she, because uh, a lot of people, that, uh, that was a year ago, we were at a different studio. You were a comic book writer for quite some time. Pop culture journalist. Pop culture journalist. And were you going to talk? And then I was working with my cousin on comics, but my cousin went back to Colorado, so I'm just doing prose like I was doing originally. And Nina the Intergalactic Slayer, is that still? Nina the Intergalactic Demon Slayer Demon is Slayer. still alive and well. And that's the, you can get that online? Yeah, you can find it online. My uh, site in Florida that I still do TNT work covering them with, uh, they... Uh, they put it out. So it's actually published. It's just published online. So it's a but, Google certified site. But you guys do similar work. I mean, not, not, I mean, you don't, not with your razor plugs, but you guys do. <laughs> I don't like write horror. erotica, but we did. But I mean, write, I'm you like horror. you. I didn't write. I, I actually, because I'm a woman and right. all that Twilight shit, I, I purposely noticed. make my sex scenes as disturbing as possible just right. to fuck with people. Right. Right. <laughs> Can you give us an example More of that, Nicole? Anyway. <laughs> um, in Carousel Boys, there's this femme fatale, and it's like this really weird, it becomes a rape scene, but it's actually just like all about power. And she basically, she's, you know how in movies, the uh, female victim will always take that moment where the male victim is, or the male killer has decided he's going to like undress her or something. That's when she kicks right. him in the balls, runs away, but right. she always does a moment too soon. Right. So then he just chases after her. Right. This was my homage to that. So the femme fatale has the guy and then, like, he waits until right when she's about to, and then he uh, squeezes the trigger and get, actually says, "Looks like someone just blew their load," and then you know, attacks her. <laughs> <laughs> mm, interesting. <laughs> interesting. 
<laughs> so. so, so, but yeah, so you just straight like uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. We're gonna. Well, and uh, then she gets like raped by snakes, and they explode out of her. So that was an homage was, to uh, well, Temple of Doom, though. So it had nothing to do with really rape. It's just kind of creepy, rapey right, stuff. Was, uh, yeah, it's, it's, the, the whole Japanese sequence is about power. Are really into that, like the whole yeah, snakes yeah. Tentacle, and explosions tentacles and. and, and all that, you know. Yeah, no, I understand that. Is that was that the influ- was that an influence uh, Japanese or are you just Temple of Doom flat out? Just just Temple of Doom. Yeah, you're like how can I how can I put this in a vagina and have it explode? Now, um, while he's in the middle of throttling her after that sequence, a uh, voodoo queen comes and then brings him back to her lair to show him right. true power and then puts him in like this weird rabbit skin cod piece thing right. and then summons the sabat, which then is this snake demon that. And this is Carousel Boys. You were, you, you were telling us about that. I didn't mean to interrupt, but you were telling us about that uh, uh, last year, and that's still available on Kindle. I'm actually editing it, making it much better, but yeah, it's still out there, oh, okay. and uh, it'll be out in print eventually. It's just, it's just a matter of time. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so that, uh, but uh, so um, and uh, so you've got so this new book, which is the uh, the the. Um, it's a short story. Yes, it's a short story. <laughs> Killing jars. What is Killing Kinda. Jars about? Uh, uh, we like that now because people order that little book uh, yeah I uh, have to always self-publish first before I release these right so that I'm protected um I'll read a little okay <clears throat> okay everybody prepare, prepare to be scared it's not gonna stay <laughs> on the edge of my seat Jack the light feminine whisper called through the darkness help me Jack I need you Jack groaned getting up from his warm bed despite the protests of his tired body the urgent and fearful beckoning leading him onward. Help me, Jack, I continued to beg. Help me, please. Please help me, Jack. The cellar was full of jars. His wife's growing obsession over canning had started innocently enough, just a few seasonal jams and sauces, but it had now grown into a tall pickled archive of vegetables and meats. It was cold in the cellar tonight. Jack could even see his breast frosting over the glass as he made his way through the stacks of rotten brine. There, sitting on its own empty case of dust and cobwebs, was a single monarch butterfly. It was stunning, an unearthly creature, and Jack let out a gasp despite himself, hesitating in slight awe before drawing near. Her wings were the most brilliant, pale blue Jack had ever seen, and they transfixed him almost hypnotically as she fluttered around helplessly within the jar. Help me, Jack, she whispered, the pale, frosty vapor of his own breath hanging between them, chasing small crystalline veins of ice up her glass. I need you. Jack nodded gently gripping the jar and untwisting the top, watching awestruck and shivering as she flew forth and flitted about, finally returning to land on his trembling pale cheek with the softest of kisses. Thank you, Jack, she whispered into him, sorry, letting him feel the power and soft femininity of her true form. And now I need something else. What? Jack asked in that moment, both her eager champion and slave. Free me. Blood, red and slick, spilled from the prostitute's stomach. I'm just going to stop there. (laughs) (laughs) That's what it's about. (laughs) Uh, Interesting. So literal killing jars. Literal killing jars. Mm, Interesting. Vessels. Uh, Oh. I think it's a little spiritual later on, and it fucks with your head. That's good. So, so where does somebody order that? Uh, it's uh, available on Kindle for 99 cents, but uh, if you're going to the Bar Sinister anniversary party, you're getting one for free. (laughs) Oh, really? Oh, that's going to be the gift bag? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Good for you. They always do great gift bags. They do. No, that's good. That, that, that's going to be great. Um, and so um, how did you hook up with them? Oh, they were asking for art to be donated. And I'm all, well, what if I give you a short story? So. Right. And so, so you got to sit there and self-print uh, 400 of those? 450. I have to bind them. Uh, the printing shop uh, kind of printed them a little off, but I kind of like it because it gives them more of a... Uh, right. A... Uh, Marquis de Sade type uh-huh, feel. Definitely. <laughs> I like that. So, and uh, so that, that was great. I, I know last year I, uh, I read part of your story and I, I, it's, it's a lot creepier when you read it. I like it. It's Thanks. good. I tried, to, I tried to do it in my creepiest voice, but it didn't quite work. And, uh, Help me, Jack. So, <laughs> so uh, Xavier, now we were talking about you. Now, uh, you now you told me you used to be a dom. Is that right? Yeah. Back in Boston when I was in, it's, it started off as... Um, I, my first introduction to the adult world was as a phone sex operator as a woman. And, you, you, um, you mentioned that too. That's a, you. You want to hear us, it? Yeah. yeah. Can you give us a little bit of your woman voice? We got to hear this. No, I can't do it. I haven't done Come it. Come on, so long. you're on radio. This is perfect. We want to know. I want to yeah. know. Not tonight. Aww. But um, 
What? I, I'll, call, I'll, call I'll, call, I'll call. I'll call in. I'll call. I'll call. I'm gonna call, call in. Call in I'll one call of these days. One day. Yeah. The, but but you're woman voice full people. Oh yeah, I was yeah. one of the most highly requested um, women in the, that worked there, right. and I I figured if I had a feminine voice and it was something that um, I was insecure about, I figured I why not make money off of it, and so right. I did. And then that led me to working at a sex shop in Boston, a really small, really upscale, really nice shop, and um, I started to train as a dungeon master and started um, learning how to how to be a, a be a dom and how to um, make money doing that. So mm -hmm. I did that all through school and um, it helped me be able to buy books and stuff. I, it right. was nothing that I brought into my personal life. It's not something that I'm necessarily personally interested in, right. but I'm interested in the psychology. Hey, is your it. husband personally interested in that? No. Okay. No. The psychology is interesting, isn't it? It is. I think, you know, when you have I mean, there's a, definitely personality types. <laughs> there is. And I think what I always found interesting was that I'd have a professor or a teacher or a lawyer at my house mm -hmm. dancing around naked in lingerie with a butt plug up his ass. And, you know, I'd be like with Everybody's my books ready to, ready to go to school. And I'm like, okay. You know, so I was always interested when they'd be calling their kids or their wives from my apartment. Right. And like, oh, I'm going to come pick you up and take you to see Santa. Well, <laughs> well, Got well, it. well let me ask you, since you know both sides mm -hmm. uh, intimately, mm -hmm. what's the difference between heterosexual fantasies and homosexual fantasies? Is there really a difference or? I, I don't know. I, th I don't know if that there's. Did you I think experience like a difference? Like. I, I don't. Th I think fantasy is fantasy. I think everybody, fan you know, everybody's fantasy life is wild and untamed and I, I just think that in my experience every you know a lot of people the people that you look at that are the most powerful are the people who are in the most control are the ones that are up to some sort of shenanigans right <laughs> so you know right. yeah, Why? Right. Why? <laughs> uh, for, for instance <laughs> if you look in this studio I, I could tell you Nicole probably has a way wilder sex life than Josie and then Jenny the producer is very quiet <laughs> she's the wildest Animal, one of them all right? am I right <laughs> She's got somebody tied up in her basement. <laughs> no, she does under her desk. Yeah, he's tied up to the chair right over there. So. She's but, stepping on someone in her stilettos right now. So, I, I, but I, but I, I, what's the and uh, what's the difference between I mean, uh, gay erotica and uh, and straight erotica, or do you know? Because I have honestly, I haven't read a lot of gay erotica, so I'm not really sure. I haven't either. I, I actually, I actually hate yeah. erotica. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not an erotica. So you're done, you're done with it. No, I still write it, but it, but it's not my. To me, erotica is the Marquis de Sade and right. um, the story of O and classic erotica, and that's right. what I aim for. And right. I erotica. So it's been a way for him to make money, and right? that's how right. I got published. It's not why yes. everyone so, gets into porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know why everyone it. gets into porn, but I, um, I, I started getting published that way. It wasn't right. what I expected. It wasn't what I wanted, and so now I'm actually turning my focus back to horror and I have a great audience. I have great right. fans. I have people who love my stuff. Um, I've had to really work at it. My stuff is not typically the formula of gay erotica and I've, I've struggled with that. I've struggled. I've earned every fan what, that I have. What's, what's the formula? You know, there's an alpha male, there's a beta male. The, the alpha male rescues the beta male from some, they share a blanket. They Some evil they woman. <laughs> right. Or, you know, he's tied up and all of a sudden he gets rescued. He has rescued. wounds that need to be dressed. Of right. course, we have to take that shirt off. Yeah, she and I are, are, are very much alike because the, the Twilight shit and all of that, right. it's, it makes me cringe. So it's really yeah. hard for me to write Happily Ever Afters. It's hard for me. In my Happily Ever Afters, my publisher says, he goes, yeah, but that's not really There's always like a little... Uh, always. Uh, yeah. always. That's good. Well, that always. makes it more interesting, I would think. So, yeah. But yeah. I love it. It's good. And I have a lot of stuff coming out this year, so I'm excited about is it. Is Lily a horror, a horror book? It is. Um, you know, it was... So this is the... I'll give a very short explanation of it. Um, my old publisher asked for a Father's Day story. And so my... You're good my, with holidays. You're like the Hallmark card of, like, gay erotica. <laughs> and I challenged myself, you know? <laughs> give so, the gifts that'll keep giving. Yes. Give, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> You exactly. have a Thanksgiving story? Well, as a matter of fact, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got your turkey That's right here. Easy, right? Yeah, yeah. My second story was a Valentine's story, actually, Aww. but let's not get into that. Anyway, so Lily, he, they was were it asking. Bloody? It was a bloody Valentine's Day. So, <laughs> yeah. um, how did you guess? <laughs> exactly. So they the were um, wearing red. They were requesting me to write something for Father's Day, like dads need love too, and how hard it is to be a dad and in love. Aww. And so in my head, I was like, what would be, you know, and it had to have a Father's Day theme. So I wrote this story about a little girl who gets dragged into the woods by a wolf right. and um, returns to him on Father's Day oh. a year later, different and changed. And so in my head, I was like, what 
a father. That's, she's a, howling. that's hard. Yeah. You know, you have a kid who's a werewolf. That's a struggle. Right. So um, I sent it and they were like, yeah, but it's not really Father's Day. I said, well, she comes back on Father's Day. So right. they released it as its own thing. Right. Which was kind of cool. But so. it's totally parental because it's about the struggle about teenagers and what you're like when you start getting older. By 13, I was a monster. Right. You know, and a father's love yeah. for his kid, you know. Yeah, and you were a monster at thirteen, Nicole. I, I, I find, that, I find that hard to believe. Really, hormones make everybody a werewolf. Really, <laughs> and, 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 and let me let me. And ask, it always happens around the fucking full moon, so it really does make you a werewolf. Well, it's interesting you say that because uh, for some reason, and this has been borne out this this year, I've noticed, and our friend Elizabeth has uh, has confirmed this, that every time there's a full moon. I seem to have a great night. People, women find me attractive on a full moon. <laughs> like every time I'm like at a club and they're like, all the girls are like, wow, they're, you know, they're flirty. They're very receptive. They're like this. It's like, ah, yeah, damn. there's a full moon. So I, I don't know if I'm a werewolf or not, but, ah, but, damn. I, but I was going to ask you both well, of you. The reason why the moon affects <laughs> humans is that it pulls on the tides where, you know, like fucking right. 90, how much? 98% water. So right, it right. affects us. So then I've got a lot of water weight, but uh, I was going to. Well, you are a water sign. Scorpio? Yeah. Oh, you remembered. Yeah, I remember. Oh. <laughs> Goes with your eyes. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. But I was going to ask you, and you, because you're pop culture experts, and we're going to talk a little little Comic-Con here in, in the little time we have left, but why are, why, I mean, everything's vampire now. Mm -hmm. Why are why werewolves uh, take a backseat to vampires? They've never been as quite as popular as vampires. Most people just aren't into furries. Is that what it is? And I think vampires are sexual, and I yeah. think that that's what people are attracted to is dark, their dark sexuality, and it's right. hard to be turned on by dogs. Well, also like the bikers. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, but, now, but now every 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 vampire thing sort of throws a werewolf in there. Yeah. Twilight, True Blood. They I mean, make like, great sidekicks. Uh, and every yeah. once in a while, some fan base actually likes the werewolf, but it's just right. harder for people to relate to the animal. It's easier right. to relate to the human shell. Well, and, 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 and which, which brings me to another thing, because... Uh, I would imagine uh, werewolves are popular with the gay community because the, the bear thing. They the hairy, hairy men uh -huh. are much more coveted in the gay community than in uh, the straight female community. I've noticed. I'm very. Uh, I'm a bear. <laughs> I can go and I, I get hit. On, I get. A, I get hit on. I, okay, I'm a wolf. I wolf, get hit. Wolf, wolf. Wolf. Yeah, I get. <laughs> I get hit on by men all the time. Beautiful, amazing looking men. I wish I looked like. And then straight women, it's it's not appealing. Why is that? Why, why are why are why are men? He asks every gay guest the I don't know. same question. Yeah, so I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm gonna do a montage with that question coming. Please do. Up. Yeah, we're gonna have that and going in. Why do women like bears? <laughs> then why don't they? And I ask all the black women that come in why why all the black women love well, him. Well, black women like that too. I don't know. That's actually it's about you know fear. You're kind of too much for me to handle. I'm scared of you. You're not scared. No, I'm a little scared of you. And that's, uh, you know, I, you're I love a Scorpio that. bear. I love that you're flirting with me, but that, that you're not scared I'm of me. I'm fucking with you. I know yeah. you're, fucking, you're fucking and flirting with me. I understand. I know. <laughs> I was trying to I was trying to go with that oh, moment for a second, yeah, but you won't you will never you won't even let me go that far. That's how it was. Oh, well, I but, keep everything above the board. But uh, but you're you're gonna be in a bear anthology soon? I am, yeah. yeah. You know, I've I've I <laughs> wrote a column. <laughs> I did my research. I wrote oh, a column that? I wrote a column for a um all bear for a long time and I interviewed different bear groups from all over the world. So I right. actually learned a lot. I'm I'm not active in the bear community right. um at all, but I'm too busy. <laughs> He's um, married, people. Too. He's married. He's married. Yeah, yeah. He's not active in the bear community. He's a hibernating bear. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take, you to, I'll take you to a bear club with me, Josie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you show me the photos. <laughs> mm. Actually, Josie said it's a real, like, young, shirtless, uh, hairless, uh, really young... <laughs> I would say cubs, but uh, like hairless cubs now, <laughs> New right? Ones. Really, yeah. You're, you're getting younger and younger and younger as you go along. Am I, am I wrong? As I go along, as I get older. Yeah. So, so you're the bear. So speaking of which, Comic Con. Comic Con. Okay. <laughs> now this is the second year. This is the second year in a row. Cartoons that I watch with Nicole, my boyfriend. Nicole Six is not going to be a Comic Con, which I will is not a, which be is a Comic Con. So how many years in a row did you go to Comic Con? Because you were very active in the since Comic -Con. I've been out here. So this will. Three years Comic Con, two years not Comic Con. Now, where did you come from? I, I forget. Colorado. Colorado. That's right. I forgot. I. I, I but oh so yeah, I drove through your 
Oh, yeah. My yes. homeland. Yeah, so Josie, Josie was on the rodeo uh, riding all sorts of animals uh, mm-hmm. a few, few few weeks ago. So here, so, uh, so, so I was I was li- looking at what was going on. First off, the Star Wars Episode Seven. Mm-hmm. I could care less. The, fir- the, the prequels. I'm not going to be there anyway. The prequels were horrible. I think Seven will be better than the prequels because I always, I know how Disney handled Pirates of the Caribbean. So I just keep picturing Pirates of the Caribbean in space. That doesn't sound good. I That's like Pirates analogy. of the Caribbean. The first one. Yeah. Now they're coming out with five. Do we really need another one? I keep watching them. Oh, you like pirates? I relate to Captain Jack Sparrow. Most people are attracted to him. I right. think you like are, him. You are Captain yeah. Jack Sparrow. Okay, so that makes sense. <laughs> uh, Xavier, what do you think? Uh, Star Wars Episode Seven. you're into it? Yeah, I don't really care. Okay. I, I thought the fir- that the prequels were kind of ridiculous. But, they were horrible. They were. They, but I, mean, I would watch I mean, it. This is going to be better. We're I'm all sure. We're going to watch it. Yeah, Come we're on. All watch it. I, you know, I, I don't know. It's funny, and it's and it's funny because people. I know so many rabid Star Wars fans, and they'll be like, "Okay, the first two weren't good, but the the, the third one was good." And then you're like, nah. and "All you have to say is like, Padme, no." And they're like, "Okay." The it third sucked. one was the worst of the three. It was, it was pretty bad. It was terrible. Right. So Josie's actually excited about the new show Gotham. Which is a Batman show without Batman. Now that sounds fucking horrible too. It's horrible. I'm not excited about it. <laughs> you've been you about, about five times on the show. I don't know oh, anyone is excited about it. I got paid to work on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so pop culture I mean, wise, <laughs> comic book wise, what, I'm not gonna say it sucks. <laughs> why, pop culture why, wise, horror wise, comic hand. book wise, what are we looking forward to? What do you guys think? I, I, because I can sit here and, and and pot shot all these fucking things all, all day long. But what are you excited about? Uh, get me excited about something. I want to see Lucy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lucy does look so good. good. Yeah. Yeah. Lucy does look good. Oh, man. Prefer I like that. Luke Besson a lot, so, and it looks fucking amazing. Right, right. I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a big fan of his, too, and so, uh, so that's The that's concept is amazing because it's true. Right. I mean... Well, first of all, when you said Lucy for a second, I thought you meant mind. I love Lucy, but... Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, all powerful ass-kicking Lucy. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's pretty hot, man. And you sort of relate to that, too. Oh, yeah, I love that. I mean, I liked, I watch Limitless because I enjoy seeing people who use more than just the average bounce of your brain because I try very hard to. I think everyone who reads uses slightly more of their brain. Than- and, and let's be honest, Luke Besson <laughs> probably watched that movie. He's like, hmm, I could do that <laughs> with uh, Scarlett Johansson and more ass-kicking. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and it's better because uh, it's Besson. I've never heard it said out loud. So <clears throat> let me get a little French for you. So Luc Besson will uh, do it much better because if you've looked at his other work, he makes excellent ass I'm, 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 I'm very much, very much a Luc Besson fan. I even like uh, Angela, which is not an ass kicking film, but is I haven't I seen it yet. It's on Netflix. I've been planning to. It's, it's a, well, it's it, it's not the same. It's, it's it's very romantic. I don't know. It, it touched my emotions, but I'm more sensitive than you are. I don't know if you would like it or not. It's not that quite that ass kicking. I like his women. He writes yeah. women I can relate to, and that's right. pretty hard for men usually. Right. So. You, do you have to go, Josie? Uh, you're looking at the clock. I do have to go, but not quite yet. Okay, well, You're please let us know. We, we got I will, got, well, I'll make an announcement. Well, please do. <laughs> so, Xavier, what are you, pop culture-wise, because, I mean, everything's comic books. Everything's yeah. going to Comic-Con. Pop culture-wise, uh, besides your own stuff, and we're going to get some more, what else you're working on, what are you looking forward to? I'm really excited for, um, I've, the only, what's really got me excited is Penny Dreadful. I think yes. that it's yes. an incredible. I, I got to see that. I like that they're bringing in all the um, old school, classic, you know, horror from the Penny it's Dreadfuls. Um, it, it's beautifully done. It's interesting for me because right. the company that I work for, they, their publishing goes all the way back to, mm. to these early London papers. And we, we have some of them at our office. Well, they're pretty awesome. cool. I mean, they have everything from poems to you name it, to short stories, mm-hmm. or it's it's cool, to as uh, you know, mm-hmm. a little, little sketches. And it's beautifully done. I don't. I, I think it's apps. I think it's sublime. Actually, I I, yeah. I think that everything about it is fantastic. So that's gotten me excited. And, and the cinematography is amazing. amazing. Yeah. But you're into you. I mean, uh, from just just leaving from this conversation I've had with you for the last three or five minutes, you're into other time periods. Yeah, I'm into. Um, I'm into things that are beautifully done and um, beautifully well, so and tragic. Look, look, look on either side of you. Yes, I am too. Mm-hmm. And tragic. I think I horror um, it's tragic. Exactly too. There you go. Tra- <laughs> no, no, go I think ahead. beautifully, beautifully tragic and horrific, horrifically tragic attracts me, and everything about that show is very um, sad, but also very scary. And I don't think I've been scared by a possession scene since The Exorcist. And I got to say that the Penny Dreadful scenes are. 
are, are great. Really? Yeah, because yeah, there's been a lot of exorcists. I mean, th th that's like the, this is like a new everybody one. Everybody tries to recreate it every time. Right. right. Ghosts are hot right now. Witches are trying to take over, but <laughs> so that's what I was going to get to. Listen to okay. so many ghosts. Vampires are coming. Oh, shit. I want to say something. I'm so okay. excited. Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, you know, our one of our guests, um, Amazon, Amazon Eve, Eve, is, is going to be on American Horror Story, and my good friend Ben Wolf, who I've worked with a few times, he's little guy that was the baby on the first one and I knew they were going to cast him when you mentioned Amazon Eve. I'm, I'm like, they're going to cast Ben. Right. And they did the call, the call sheet was online today right. and sure enough, their names were there and I looked on their pages and they're in New Orleans. He, he was name, like, this name, is so cool. His name was on there? Yeah. And by the oh, way, yeah. if you guys don't know who Amazon Eve is, Amazon Eve is the world's tallest model. She's six foot uh, ten in, in, in bare feet. So later on tonight, I'm going to give them and, a shout out. It's so and, and, exciting. And if you go to uh, if you go to our archives, uh, first time she was on the show, we we wrestled right over there. And it was, very <laughs> it was close, funny. Very close contest. <laughs> it was funnier than the actual camera work that you had. Plus, we were both wearing black, so nobody could see what was going on. You I'm not just, a camera person. What can I say? You could just hear my cries of <laughs> cries of pain. But uh, Amazon Eve is, and your 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 friend is a little person. Very small. Okay. Cause very, very small. Cause um, he played, we did a play together uh, called a, um, a Madonna Christmas Carol, and he played Little Timmy. Madonna Christmas Carol. It was all were drag queens. No, I was Joan C Crawford. And, oh, uh, that's where you played Joan Crawford. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was, um, I, I was the only straight person there. It was great. We had the best you makeup people. <laughs> And Madonna's Christmas Carol, you're the only straight person there. Go figure. Half of them were on RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, right. We had uh, one of them's a very famous Madonna impersonator, and others a Michael Jackson impersonator. Right. It was very talented people. It was right. fun. And how many times have you booked them on the show? Uh, we've talked about it. Well, yeah, yes, yes. yes. And, and, Eddie and, Delight. Okay, I would love to have. I, I, just, I, I just, I love interesting people, and you guys are definitely interesting people. And uh, so we should probably have Amazon Eve and, um, Amazon and Ben Eve's Wolf be, come yeah. when, uh, when they're done filming. That would be fun. That'll be probably next Good year. Show. But uh, no, you, that'd be six weeks. No, 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 she said that she's she's gonna be gone for a while. Uh, uh, I think she's gonna, that long. I, I that many episodes? She, she's in, she's in a lot of episodes. She's recurring. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So cool. But, Good but, for her. But uh, enough of that, Xavier. Now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> When, when Josie gets on a tangent, it's hard to stop her. But what are the other <laughs> books that you have coming out? You said you have hey, a lot of stuff coming stuff out. I say. <laughs> right. And she's wearing a great jewelry. I know. Oh, thank this you. one I really like. I've oh, been wait, wait, it oh out. wait, you're wearing jewelry. I'm yeah, sorry. Look at all of it. There's like that green. You're a little yeah, that the red. Yeah, awesome. yeah. yeah, I'm just watching the. I'm just watching the the, the, the curves of the, the of the. Anyway, so what? what uh, <laughs> they're mesmerizing. So um, and I, that's and, because you're the straight man in the room. <laughs> I'm, I'm the straight, I am the straight man in the room. Yes. <laughs> They're looking at my jewelry. You're like, <laughs> right, right. I, I understand. No, trust me. I, I had a similar experience last night at Tori Amos. I had, uh, I, I, was, I was, I was, I was hoping maybe to meet some, uh, some uh, sensitive uh, Bohemian woman, and I was, uh, I was in between. The two you guys, met lots of gay men. Two, 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 yeah, two queens to my left, two queens to my right. He did, a, I guess. He did a sort of, sort of fairy tale. We all sort of sniffled and. Uh, Got a, little, beautiful. got a little misty. Did you have a group hug? We bonded. Hug it out. We didn't hug. We didn't quite get that far, but one of the guys <laughs> was trying to play footsie with me. That's a whole thing. Anyway, so, um, so what other what other projects do you have coming out? Yeah, I have um, several short stories coming out um, that are going to be part of collections. I have a best of. Um, one of them is going to be a best of erotica um, collection that's coming out. I'm really excited about it. I have the um, a bear story coming out in a, a bear collection. Mm -hmm. um, I have like a Downton Abbey. Um, period short story coming out in a period collection. And okay. then I also have a full length um, dark fantasy horror book coming out, full length novel, the first of a series coming oh, out okay. this year. And, and, what, and what, what is that about? Um, that's about, it's called The Elementals and it's going to be a series of books about a group of male friends that um, each are represent an element. Right. And um, it's kind of inspired by the Witches of Eastwick in that they come together and by them coming together, they attract the dark element, and right. then they have to kind of find a way to get rid of what they've summoned, and they're all being seduced simultaneously by him. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so the first book is about to come out, and then I have, I'm going to write three other books. Right. Do so, you, when you write, do you write them all at once, or do you write, do you, do you trickle them out, or in spurts, do you get in a writing uh, mode, and you do a whole bunch of books and writing, and then you're burnt out? No, I try to, they trickle out. 
Yeah, they trickle are, out. Are, are you like in the middle of one story and then a, a, a thought for another story comes up? Yeah, actually, and right now. You put that away and then you write the other story and you come back. Sometimes, like right now, I'm writing a warrior barbarian short story. And I wrote that while writing a short piece for a radical eco-feminist <laughs> um, zine. Wow. <laughs> so I wanted to really see if I could do it. Right. And um, Did so they I ask did. you to or did you approach them? They It was a, it was an open call. Actually, they came into um, where I work and dropped off a call for submissions and everybody who looked at me and they're like, are you going to do it? And I'm like, why not? Let me see if I can. And um, sure enough, I, I researched eco-feminism and radical eco vegan eco-feminism and I got really involved in it. And I realized that I've read a lot of um, works by authors who write that when I was right. a kid, actually. So um, I channeled that and something came. And I, I wouldn't have done it if well, the well, character Why were you reading eco-feminism when you were a kid? I didn't, I reali I didn't realize that I was. There's right. a writer, Ursula K. Le Guin, who okay. um, is a big a big writer of that, which I didn't know, but I read a lot of her work yeah. as a kid. And um, sure enough, I wouldn't have written it if the character didn't come forth. Right. If I didn't sit down and I literally sat down and her voice came to me, the first sentence came out, her name came, and I was like, right. there's a voice here. The, so. the, the, that the first sentence is completely important. Completely yeah. That's relating. when you know you have a book or a story. Right. And, right. and, and mm -hmm. the same thing with you, you have to have the character first or are you uh, with the situation first? Or I have, um, I usually get both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like uh, my next story, I was inspired while watching uh, a movie. And so it's going to be about a uh, dashboard totem that gets blood splattered on it in the middle of a murder. And so this little totem is going to go get revenge. Whoa, ah, that's cool. Like little, kind of like a little Chucky So Donald then I'll right? develop those characters. I'll develop the killer. I'll develop the victim. Killer totem. <laughs> well, and then in, the oh, totem the itself is not going to probably have much personality. <laughs> it's just going to do its thing. Are you going to have to go to places where no totem is gone? <laughs> come on, yeah. come on. Ke Keanu Reeves can play that totem. Come on. But, uh, Xavier, is this I love it? you guys. Peace it, out. Bye, Josie. Bye, Josie. See you Bye, Josie. next week, I think. Like look, at, look at those Marvel Comics pants. Woo! Woo! Anyway, take the rest of your Perrier. Come on, enjoy. Anyway, Xavier, <laughs> is, this, is this your first novel? No. Um, my first novel actually came out last year, and it was called Velvet. Um, speaking of inspiration, I I really love design, and I love um, style, and I, I actually read a lot of Vogue, not for anything other than the fact that I'm inspired by the design of mm -hmm. fashion. And the last page of it had a velvet shoe, and they wrote a paragraph that said, in the 14th century, you could be killed for wearing velvet. And the minute I read that, That's amazing. an entire novel came to me. Right. That's amazing. About, That'd be good. About the sumptuary laws of the 14th century, right. of which you could not wear velvet unless you were royal, and you could be put to death for it. And I wrote a whole book called Velvet. Right. But that's where the inspiration that's good. came from. So, so good. Then. That's how it works. So well, really, I can tell you're a good writer. And oh, you. when you're actually a talented writer, not right. just like writing for whatever reasons, people who aren't talented write, I don't know, fame. Uh, <laughs> and Sammy, you, you, you heard some of her writing, not so bad. Yeah, right? I, I love that. I right. love what she read. But when you're genuinely a creative writer, it's just you get that trickle of inspiration and right. then you write it, then you edit the shit out of it. Right. And tr speaking of trickling uh, of inspiration, I never asked you, how did you find out about me to write the article about me? I was, I'm curious about that. You know what? I, it was something to do with Facebook. I think I had liked something which led me to your page. And okay. I, the column really started off as a sex advice column. And then what happened was so many, in, I really wanted to interview a bunch of different interesting people that were right. doing interesting things. Right. And so I, I saw that you were doing something different and that's what okay. led me to that. And then I ended up interviewing presidential candidates and and then which, Buck which, Angel. And which presidential candidate? Fred Carger, who was the first gay Republican presidential oh then, yeah, yeah i heard him yeah yeah so a lot and it was just it went from you know and all of a sudden i'm like this isn't a sex column anymore and so yeah. i started co covering fringe culture so all i right. could interview everybody all right and awesome. i hate to i hate to man I, i'm sorry we were late because we have so much to talk about we could go on for hours i want to have you back definitely yeah. uh, next Thank time you. you have a project and uh, you know nicole you're welcome at any time we're already talking about mm -hmm. you and a whole different kind of show <laughs> but nicole how do people get a hold of you and get a hold of your work uh go to nicole6.com i make it very simple Right. And then uh, there's a link to my Twitter on there from there. And if you have to find me on Facebook, just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> if you have to. <laughs> and Xavier, how do people get a hold of you? Um, two places. Um, XavierAxelson.com. I kept it simple, too. And um, my publisher's website, which is SeventhWindow.com. SeventhWindow.com. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, go to GothComedian.com. And that's X-A-V-I-E-R-A-X-E-L-S-O-N. Correct. And uh, Axelson, uh, there's got to be a story behind that, right? <laughs> For next time. Ooh. Okay. Well, we got 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. All right. Everybody, come down Sunday night if you're in LA at Inside Jokes. Check out Skid Row Studios Live. 
and have a wonderfully creepy week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>